Hello everyone and welcome to this video on Live Alive, a remake of the Super Nintendo JRPG that was released on the Famicom back in 1994. Huge thanks to Square Enix for the review code on the PS5 and the opportunity to share this game with you. Very much appreciated and thank you so much. In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about what the game is and what I think about the game so far, with footage taken from the first two hours that I've played. Gameplay. So when you start the game with your chosen character, you can explore the map, meet different characters, and encounter enemies. In each scenario there will be unique gimmicks and it will vary with each character's story. From the footage here, I'm exploring a Japanese castle and have the ability to use a special ability to bypass encounters with enemies if I choose to. I managed to use this effectively, but I wanted to get stuck into the combat and with that, gain experience and in turn, new abilities. As I progressed through the level, there were also puzzles to solve, and I really enjoyed solving the puzzles that I came across, with the option to create shortcuts with an item that I procured on my way through the castle itself. When it comes to fighting enemies, the battles take place on the 7x7 grid, with the characters able to move and position themselves to perform actions, such as attacks and skills. Having not played the 1994 version, I learned that this remake now has visual bars to represent health and charge time for each character and enemy. Now what I like about Live Alive is that skills can be used as much as you want, as long as the charge bar, which can be seen under the health bar, is full. Some actions and skills can be done there and then, but some will require some charging time before being used, such as Oboromaru's Dust Veil ability. Some skills also leave an air of effect and these can be seen by the coloured tiles on the grid. Water Spout, for example, leaves flooded tiles that give water damage to your enemies and yourself while standing on them. So bear that in mind when in a battle. It can turn the tide in your favour or against you. You also have the option to use an item, such as a healing shrimp rice ball in this scenario. If your character is incapacitated, you can be healed to get back into the fight. However, if you are hit whilst being incapacitated, your character will be dismissed and unable to join the fight. You can also pass your turn, wait and flee. Passing your turn and wait help with filling your charge bar, but also leaves you vulnerable to attack from enemies. And flee gives you the chance to escape from battle if you feel it's best to do so. Customization. Being a JRPG, you can equip new weapons, armor and accessories as you progress. And you get new loot from exploring, discovering chests and from battles too. As you level up, you'll unlock new abilities as you go, and there's no need to switch up skills, as they'll be ready to use in the skills menu in your next battle. Graphics The graphic style is the HD 2D style, and I'm in awe of it. Being the first HD 2D game I've ever played, I love the mix of 2D characters moving around a 2D 3D world, and the depth of field you get from the style is great. Being able to jump across the castle walls with the towering castle behind me in the distance was very, very cool. Now I know this is quite a short review of Live Alive, considering the time I've played so far, but after two hours I had trouble putting the controller down the stop, as I'm very much invested in this game. I've only scratched the surface of Live Alive, but I'm ready to get stuck into more of it, and I will be doing this over my Twitch channel, which I'll link down below very soon. So if you want to see more of Live Alive, head on over and hit that follow button. Now I hope you've also enjoyed this video, and if you did, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more content in the future. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.